Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a fun puzzle I saw on Twitter by at YBGoy. We have the X and Y axes, and we have a square that's tilted in the first quadrant. We're going to extend the sides of the square until they intersect the X axis. So let's extend the left side of the square. It intersects the X axis at the point three. Then we'll extend the opposite side this will reach the x-axis at the point five. Now let's extend the bottom side of the square. It reaches the x-axis at the point seven. And finally, we'll extend the top side of the square and it intersects the x-axis at the point 13. The question is what is the area of the square? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So how can we work it out? So intuitively, let's think about this side of the square and we're going to extend it. So you could think about this as the horizontal side of the square. When we extend it to the X axis, it turns into a length of two. Now if we take this vertical side of the square it extends to the x-axis to a distance of six. So if you take the ratio of these lengths, it's six over two, which is equal to three. So intuitively, we can think about this right triangle, and if the base has a length of t, the lengths are being expanded at a rate of three times that, so this vertical distance will be three t. That'll be the information we need to solve the problem, but how are we going to prove this rigorously? So let's go about it step by step. So first, let's look at the x-axis and make tick marks, and then let's zoom in on this diagram. There are various ways to solve the problem, and I will just illustrate a few of the different approaches. So to get started, the distance between three and five is equal to two. The distance from five to seven is equal to two, and the distance from seven to 13 is equal to six. Suppose the side of the square is equal to x. Then all sides are equal to x. So this top side is x, this right side is x, and this bottom side is x. Now from the point seven, let's construct a parallel line to the purple line that's extending from five. So let's extend this line and intersect it with this yellow line. So what can we say about this quadrilateral that we've just constructed? So we're going to use similar triangles. So let's take a look at this triangle here. If we scale it by a factor of two, we end up with this larger triangle. So these are similar triangles. So what does that say? Well, let's look at these lengths of two and two. That means that the opposite sides will also be in the same ratio. So if we have X over here, then this length must be equal to X as well. So now we have a quadrilateral where two adjacent sides are equal to X and we have all four right angles. So we have a square. So this top side will be equal to X and this other side will also be equal to X. Now, where do we go from here? Let's go back to this triangle and notice that it will be similar to this larger triangle. So now we'll take a look at the ratio of sides. So let's suppose that this leg is equal to A. We will have X divided by two is in the same ratio as A divided by six. So X over two is equal to A over six. Multiplying both sides by six gives that A is equal to six X over two, which equals three X. So this length is equal to three X. Now we have a right triangle with legs of X and three X and a hypotenuse equal to six. So X squared plus the square of three X is equal to six squared, which means X squared plus nine X squared is equal to 36. So 10 X squared is equal to 36 and X squared is equal to 3.6 or 18 over five. But X squared is exactly the area of the square. So the answer is 3.6 or 18 over five. So that's the answer, but I just want to illustrate some other approaches we could have taken. So starting from this diagram, here's a slightly different approach we could have taken. 
Let's say that in this large triangle, this angle is equal to theta. Now, this means that sine of theta is equal to x over 6. Now, this triangle is similar, and this angle is also equal to theta. In this triangle, the cosine of theta is equal to x over 2. But we always have the identity that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So we substitute in, and we get that x squared over 36 plus x squared over 4 is equal to 1. Multiplying both sides of the equation by 36 gives x squared plus 9x squared is equal to 36, which means, once again, that x squared is equal to 3.6 or 18 over 5. Just a slightly different approach we could have taken to get the same answer. There's another slightly different trigonometric approach we could have taken. In this triangle, the tangent of theta is equal to x divided by 3x, which equals 1 over 3. So if we have a right triangle with the tangent of theta that's equal to 1 over 3, this side is 1, this side is 3. So we take 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is equal to 10. So the hypotenuse is the square root of 10. We can then calculate that the sine of theta is equal to 1 divided by root 10. But in this triangle, we also know that the sine of theta is equal to x over 6. Multiplying both sides of the equation by 6 gives that x is equal to 6 divided by root 10. All we have to do to figure out the area of the square is to square this, and we once again get that x squared is equal to 36 over 10, which equals 3.6. We get the answer in one more way. Now I just want to illustrate one more method, not because it will actually contribute anything more, but I think it's visually nice to look at. So we already have parallel lines going from 3, 5, and 7, and then we have the next point at 13. But what if we were to extend parallel lines at every two units? So let's break up the 6 into every two units. So let's go two units to 9, and we'll create a parallel line. We'll go to 11 and create another parallel line. So finally, we get to 13. So we have parallel lines at 9 and 11. So now we've broken up this large triangle into many small similar triangles. So we have 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2 here. These are all equal to each other. So all of these will also be in the same ratio. So these remaining distances will all be equal to each other. So we have x, x, and x. So let's just continue solving for the remaining distances. We have this purple line segment and this red line segment. So this triangle will be similar to this triangle here. And we see the sides are in a ratio of 1 to 3. So this purple distance will be 1 third of x, which is equal to x over 3. We then have this similar triangle over here. The longer leg is equal to 2x. So if we take 1 third of that, we get 2x over 3. And we've now completely solved for all these distances in case we wanted to calculate any other distance. So now in this large triangle, we have one leg is equal to 5x and the other leg will be equal to x plus 2x over 3, which is equal to 5x over 3. The hypotenuse is equal to 10. So we have the square of 5x over 3 plus the square of 5x is equal to 10 squared. This gives 25x squared over 9 plus 25x squared is equal to 100. And once we simplify this, we get x squared plus 9x squared is equal to 36, which once again gives that x squared is equal to 3.6 or 18 over 5. And that's the answer. What a fun puzzle. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.